Nadia and her husband, a successful businessman, belong to traditionally Catholic families. Daily prayer, Sunday mass, frequent confession, weekly communion. After coming to terms with the reality that they were unable to bear children, they decided to adopt a boy and a girl legally. This event instigated a relentless and dangerous jealousy on the part of some relatives who feared the loss of the financial help they were currently receiving from the couple, as well as their future inheritance. Nadia's brother was married to a woman who practiced the occult, especially spiritualism and witchcraft. In 1978, Nadia began to experience physical ailments. In particular, she was suffering from strange heart, liver, and spleen disorders that defied all medical remedies. Then came spiritual difficulties. She began to find it hard to pray and receive the Eucharist. She was tempted to blaspheme against the crucifix and the Virgin Mary. She could no longer take part in religious ceremonies and meetings. Then, years later, in the summer of 1988, Nadia's gallbladder was removed. But still, her health did not improve, and her doctor recommended visiting a famous thermal spa. There, Nadia's pain became so severe that she consulted a local doctor. After hearing the medical history of his patient, he asked her if she was a believer. At Nadia's positive reply, he firmly told her, Your sufferings go beyond anything that medical science can cure. I advise you to seek out a good priest. If you wish, I can recommend one close by who could help you. She followed this suggestion. The priest was able to help Nadia improve her prayer life. He urged her to engage in the spiritual battle to which every militant Christian is called, and he recited deliverance prayers over her for a period of time. Finally, noticing that progress was slower than expected, the priest began to suspect foul play and told her, You need an exorcist. Ask your bishop for a name. If he cannot help you, try another bishop. When Nadia and her husband returned home, they immediately called the chancery and found the name of the diocesan exorcist. They went to see him on August 16, 1988. After three appointments and a thorough examination, the priest began his prayers of deliverance, aimed at breaking the ties between Nadia and anyone who might wish to harm her, which included the following. A friend who was jealous of the children she had been able to adopt, the sister-in-law who dabbled in the occult, and some domestic helpers who had been hired to take care of the couple's country home. This house was in the middle of some farmland, but despite its rural location, it was eerily noisy. But Nadia and her husband were eventually able to discover that the former owners, who were members of satanic sects, had used the place to host magic rituals and black masses. After the priest began to exorcise the house and burn all suspicious objects, all noise ceased and peace was reestablished. Still, the blocks that prevented Nadia from attending church, praying, receiving communion, and reading the Word of God remained. Continuing his journey of discernment, and after consulting a psychiatrist who regularly helped him, the priest decided to exorcise Nadia. Although the first exorcisms did not produce any improvement, the patient's reactions clearly revealed the absence of any psychological pathology, while, at the same time, her satanic reactions became progressively worse. Finally, Nadia became so furious that all the strength of the demonic possession was revealed. Following well-tested methods, the exorcist addressed the demons in an attempt to sever all ties between any negative individual and Nadia. This is the formula he used. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the merits of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints, I break every occult tie of black magic, sorcery, curse, and so on, between you, foul spirit, when he discovered the name of the demon, he spoke the name, and Nadia. I bind every power of this spirit, and I command him to leave Nadia and go to the foot of Jesus' cross. The readers referred to page 96 regarding addressing demons directly. The above prayer 
and others quoted in this book are to be reserved to duly appointed exorcists, ed. The invocation of the names of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, Saints Peter and Paul, and Saint Michael, and the other names that the priest would call out, such as Padre Pio, John Paul II, and the Curé of Ars, caused strong reactions in Nadia. Many exorcists asked the patient for the names of their favorite saints. Gradually, she began to find it easier to pray and to receive communion. Her husband was of great help. He prayed with her, joined her at prayer meetings, and interceded whenever he felt she needed it. It is very important that someone who is close to them assist the victims. As the exorcisms progressed, the priest increasingly used prayers of intercession. Psalms, litanies, the rosary, praise. These prayers so enraged the demon that he sought a compromise. We could strike a deal. At first, he stopped blaspheming and just insulted the exorcist. Finally, one day the demon suggested, Leave me the following six relatives and name those he wanted, and I will leave Nadia. At this, the exorcist invoked the Holy Spirit, praying to break every bond with black magic, malefice, and witchcraft. With every one of the six individuals whom the evil one wanted for his own. Throughout this, the demon was becoming increasingly furious. Finally, when the exorcist consecrated each of the six individuals to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the demon screamed desperately, If you take them away from me, what will be left for me? What will I become? At the time of this writing, 1992, Nadia is still not fully healed, but she shows constant progress. I want to mention that Nadia makes extensive use of holy water, both for blessing herself and for drinking. During exorcisms, she responds very well to anointing with holy oil and has received the anointing of the sick with great devotion. The presence of many demons became obvious. They were under the leadership of one of the strongest demons. The priest often exorcised Nadia on the anniversary of her baptism with excellent results. Once, a bishop assisted during one of the exorcisms and was well pleased, both because of the progress of the healing and because he was allowed to participate. Now she often goes to confession, as does her husband, and she claims that this sacrament strengthens her greatly. Her adopted children, 20 and 22, are also reaping the benefits of this intense prayer life.